Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today, we are back on the suggestions past the developer stuff from December 2018, and after having a look through the ground forces stuff, it's now time to have a look through aviation. Now, on top of this, understand that helicopters are not part of uh, the aviation tab, but they're actually on their own here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video looking at the naval forces stuff, and also having a look at helicopters together, and then we'll get into the mechanics, uh, you know, maps and missions, stuff like that afterwards. So this this video is going to look into the planes uh, that have been passed on to developers and nothing else. Now understand once again before we start, these are just passed on to the developers. This does not mean that these are essentially coming into the game. This just means they are up for consideration, which is something to always make sure to remember. But it is still very fun to look through the information. So the first one to have a look at is the Northrop. Uh, 9A, <clears throat> or sorry, the uh, Northrop YA-9A. Now, it is described in this uh, post as a predecessor to the A-10, and uh, what we've found, or at least uh, has been told about widely, is the idea that the A-10 is going to come to game at some point in War Thunder. Now, whether it be next year, whether it be sometime in the near future, who knows? Uh, but it would be interesting to have an aircraft which is very similar to it, if not uh, obviously worse than it, at a lower BR. So when this post was made in 2017, uh, something to understand is that, well, uh, the supersonic stuff was obviously uh, maybe being tested on, but wasn't really thought about in the community. So this would have been seen as a mid-tier rank 5 CAS machine. And a lot of people don't really like these aircraft, especially when it comes to aerialistic, because they feel like it takes away from the overall idea of aerialistic, which to them is a PvP game mode on fighter on fighter, where this thing is very much a ground attacker with the loadouts that it has. It can have a 120mm Vulcan revolver cannon, which is something that I'm not sure, I don't think we have in game, but we definitely have a similar revolver cannon 20mm in game. Then, also, a proposed option was a Gatling cannon, a 30mm, because why the hell not? Also, the secondaries on it are what make it scary, because um, something we've seen over the last uh, few years is a ramp up of secondary armaments. This basically started when the AD4 came out, along with some of the other French uh, French tree aircraft, such as the Arrougeon and the Barrougeon, and with them coming out with massive rocket pods on them. We had stuff like the IL-28SH, and now we have stuff such as, you know, the MiG-15 uh, MiG ISH. So there's a lot of rockets flying all over the place, even on stuff like helicopters, and this would add to it as well. Four LAU-61 or LAU-68 rocket pods, which are 19 hydras each, so that's 19 times four, or four 19 uh, times CRV-7 70mm rockets, or six LAU-10 rocket pods with 427mm Zuni rockets. So we're talking about AP, we're talking about HE, we're talking about big NAFOF rockets uh, designed to basically nuke anything that they touch. Now the main thing to understand with this machine is it is a jet, it has turbojet engines on it as you can see, and the... Main thing is that nothing on it is guided, so it wouldn't uh, be as... Uh, well, one, one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is the fact that uh, even though we have the uh, grief in-game uh, with its guided bombs and also the HE-111, and uh, I believe there might be another machine with it, but I can't remember. But anyway, you know what I mean. The uh, The the guided bombs that the Germans have, and then we have the bullpups from the Americans. I have a feeling it might be worth trying to get some AGMs uh, in other nations first, but because this thing doesn't have any, uh, or at least uh, right now, when we look at the secondaries on it, it doesn't, I feel like it could slot in quite easily into rank 5 and give the Americans another CAS option. Now, whether they need one right now or not, <laughs> because obviously they don't, but, at the end of the day, uh, it is always nice to have more in the game. I think it would be much better looking at other nations first, but if we're just looking at, you know, should this be added, well, yes, 
it flew. It had a bunch of uh, interesting uses that it could have had. I also believe it was used in Vietnam, so it did even see active service. The next vehicle on the list is the Flapjack, or as I like to call it, the Pancake, uh, the Vought XF5U. Now, uh, why is this weird? Well, uh, look at the design of the damn thing. This thing was designed to pretty much take off from anywhere and everywhere. It had two engines on it, as you can see, and even though... It never had any guns on it. It was proposed to have, I believe, 650 cows, which would have been nearly centrally mounted. And the idea was of this uh, that it would be able to fly with, as you can see, the elevators and the rudders, <laughs> which would also act as ailerons. So the the idea behind it was uh, just a completely nouveau uh, change in how aircraft could of uh, could have been and it was shown to fly the machine did fly i believe they made at least two prototypes of it as i said both unarmed but uh, it could have had 650s if the project went ahead what happened uh, during you know this time uh, because we're talking about basically post-war america here uh, generally, there was a lot of interesting ideas, uh, a lot, even the parasite fighter stuff, you know, that we talked about before. Um, a lot of these ideas, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, a lot of these ideas spawned after the war when it was thought of a next, like, evolution of warfare, basically, you know, what is going to happen next? And uh, it spawned some wonderful ideas, and it spawned some weird ideas, and I think this would be put under the wonderfully weird uh, <laughs> part of the ideas. You can see that this uh, actual blog post has all of the actual blueprints of it, and I actually have a book over there with uh, cross-sections of mil uh, multiple planes, and because of the weirdness of the XF5U, it was actually, you know, put in it, even though it was only really predominantly for main production aircraft. But yeah, um, should it be in game? I mean, it's a prototype and it never had any guns on it. Uh, if we can allow it to have guns, should it be in the main tech tree? No. Could it actually fit in uh, one of the... Could it fit in like an IS-7 style event, you know, with the... Uh, with the building of the vehicle and uh, you having to put it together with its little parts and stuff like that, yes, uh, I I think it could. Uh, I I think that would be a perfect place for it. And you know, if it does, if you have issues with balancing the thing, you know, you can always take guns away from it, uh, or you could reduce the power of the engines, or you can make it overheat a lot. You know, there's there's ways around <laughs> with this aircraft, but because it is weird and wonderful, because it existed, because it was tested, I would love to see it in game in some kind of form. I don't think it should be a premium. I've had enough of uh, crazy American premiums in my time with the uh, Ascender and how annoying that is to fight. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want another one of them on my hands and I feel like this could have the capability of doing that. The next vehicle is uh, uh, two sets of weird ones. So the OV-1D and the OV-10A. Uh, look how awkward uh, these machines are. Now these are basically modern propeller aircraft. I think the best way to describe them, at least from my point of view, would be recon slash, you know, attacker ideas. So the idea was that it would, uh, it, they have like four hard points on the wings, and then you use those hard points to, you know, basically lash out on the ground. But to me, when I see this, just in general, now I could be completely wrong about this, uh, I don't see a lot of defensive armaments on either of these machines. So if we look at the OV-10A, which is right here, as you can see, it looks like a complete, okay, we have air superiority, time to nuke the ground with as much as we can throw at it and <laughs> just have a bit of fun. So dual engine uh, fighters, uh, or attackers I should say, which are designed just to annihilate that one little spot over there. Kind of like the AD series of aircraft, the Sky Raiders, uh, maybe an evolution of that idea. But yeah, I mean, it, they look really cool, they look really interesting, but for me, uh, one of the biggest issues with uh, aircraft like this is uh, being able to defend yourself. Like uh, the after the addition of like the B fifty seven, the Votor, 
and uh, also the Canberra, uh, even the first Serado. A lot of people don't really like these aircraft. Uh, they, they like pl playing them, you know, uh, they, they enjoy using them, but not many people like playing against them. And the reason for this is because, because they have no armaments on them or no primary armaments, the only thing you can do if you are uh, using it is to run and uh, to either bleed tickets out or to try and get back to your airfield. And a lot of people don't really like that. A lot of people want to uh, have people who stand and fight. So for me, when I look at these aircrafts, I think, yeah, they're really cool, interesting designs. Like, look at the tail design on this. It's a tri-series for a start. And this, it's a double dipper. You know, there's there's really interesting stuff. They have miniguns attached to them. They have rockets out the wazoo. They have, obviously, very powerful engines. These are heavy aircraft. They're designed for some kind of ground attack. But where's the defense? Where's the killing of other planes? I mean, I suppose you could give them an offensive armament, uh, but the main issue I see with them is why would I take them over, let's say, a medium bomber or a fighter? Uh, one one of the biggest one of the biggest problems for planes like this in War Thunder is uh, it's very hard to get an attacker or a ground attacker to work in air realistic. The, there's only a few in game that actually work. Like the B7 works pretty well because of its torpedo. The AD4s work really well because of their ridiculous amount of armament. Same with the AD2. But that's really about it, you know. Uh, there aren't that many. Or maybe the SU6 if you're really good with the 37s. And then you got to think, well, how about ground realistic? And that's where, you know, planes like this will uh, actually do really well. So... You know, it's it's a possibility. Uh, I think since they were both made, they both uh, were used. I mean, yes, uh, let's let's get them in game. I just find it weird to think about you know where they're gonna fit. Uh, to be quite honest, the next one is the Messerschmitt K6, and I'm just gonna reference my book over here because I, when I read about the K6 ages ago, was very dubious about this, and I think I was right to do so, and I think a lot of people. Well, it shouldn't really be dubious about it. You know, it existed, uh, but there there are fairy tales painted about the K-series of BF-109s, and uh, a lot of it comes down to the fact that the engine, they, they kept upgrading the armament, right? And they kept trying to improve the engine, but the armament upgrades were faster than the engine upgrades. So you just ended up with really heavy machines which had no real uh, use in the war effort. So... Let's uh, talk about the K6. So, later production BF-109 K4s introduced an engine-mounted 30mm MK-103 cannon in place of the standard MK-108, but the 2.5-inch diameter outer sheath enclosing the barrel of this uh, weapon rendered a barrel change under operational conditions a somewhat onerous uh, task. The MK-103 was also adopted for the next K-series variants, the BF-109 K-6, which intended primarily as an anti-bomber weapon, carried two additional MK-103 cannons in underwing gondolas, but reverted to 13mm MG-131s in place of the 15mm MG-151s. In the engine cowling, uh, deliveries of the BF-109 K6 to the Jagd uh, Gruppen began in uh, January 1945, but relatively few had attained operational status by the time the Third Reich finally collapsed, and with a loaded weight of 7,928 pounds and somewhat unwieldy in consequence, this was perhaps fortunate for the Jagdflieger, uh, operating under conditions of complete air, allied air, supre air supremacy. So this thing, like, think about this, right? So you take the standard K4, you don't upgrade its engine, you don't upgrade its flight characteristics. Instead, what you do is you add an MK-103 through the nose, so the high-velocity 30, then you add uh, two MK-103s in gondolas in the wings, So, and then you have the 30 millimeters on top of that, which are nose-mounted. That's a heavy machine, right? That is a very heavy machine. Think about it whenever you put that amount of guns on, like, the G6 or anything like that. It doesn't feel nice. And it, it just is heavy. And I feel like, you know, a lot of 
K4 pilots nowadays, uh, they actually just take off the uh, extra guns, and I do the same, because you just don't have the maneuverability required to be able to keep up with your uh, allied counterparts who you're fighting against. So, uh, with the fact that you have them stuck in the wings, that would be kind of annoying. Uh, but uh, should it be in game? Yes, I mean it existed. Uh, it was used at least somewhat in operational service. And uh, will people enjoy it? Yes, so they'll enjoy one-shotting stuff. But then again, with the twenty millimeters nowadays for the Germans, you're doing that anyway. So <laughs> do you need the extra firepower? Maybe you need the extra velocity, uh, but you're not really facing jets, so uh, you know that wouldn't really be an issue. Ammo might be an issue though. Overall, though, should it be added? Yes. Uh, would it be an improvement over the K4 in game? I don't really think so. I'd probably still prefer the K4 with uh, without the 30. The next vehicle is the JU87A2. So this is one of the early versions of the Stuka, and you can see that it has the uh, <laughs> it has the overall stuff on the wheels. Um, what you will find on the early versions is they have this really interesting, uh, I don't know what you call it, but basically outer shell uh, to the wheels to keep them safe. And uh, on top of this, what you'll also find is a weaker engine and uh, the ability to only carry a 250 kilo. It was proposed that it could carry a 500, but I cannot find any reports which say that it actually did so in action. Uh, on top of this, this is a pre-World War II version of the JU-87. Uh, it would be worse than the earliest one we have in game, so we're looking at around a reserve BR for the for this JU-87. I think it should be added though, it does have historical significance, and uh, since we have added some of the other JU-87s, I feel like we should add as many as we can, just because they are really interesting, really fun machines. On top of this, uh, it would be useful in ground forces even at a 1.0 BR. When we look at its uh, armaments, it's pretty much the same as a lot of the other ones. It has two 7.92s looking forward, and then it has one 7.92 looking at the back, even though this one doesn't really have that shown. But basically it's the same, you know, it's, it's very similar to the other early JU-87s. And since we got a remodel on how the bomb works and also updated models on the JU-87s, I hope personally that we do see some more models. Uh, we have seen some added to the Italian tree, but they're straight copies, so stuff like the JU-87A2 would be lovely to see. The next one is the initial production version of the MiG-17, the MiG-17F. Uh, I don't really know a lot about uh, the well, the initial production version. It seems very similar to the one that we have in the tree. And I feel like you could just uh, folder them, to be quite honest. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't piss too many people off trying to get the MiG-19. Uh, it has the same uh, overall weapons, 223s, and uh, is it the 37? Oh, it says it somewhere. Yeah, there you go. 223s and the 37, and it seems to have incredibly similar characteristics to the one we already have in-game. Uh, should it be in-game? I mean, it existed, so yes. Uh, is it a priority for me? No, not really. The next one is a Lancaster bomber, which is the Lancaster Mark One Special. Now, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this happened with other nations. I haven't really read about it, um, but uh, think about it this way, right? So, you got a you got a B17, right? You got all your guns on your B17. They're quite heavy. You know what's also heavy? Ammunition for those guns. Imagine if you stripped all of them out. Now, think about what you could carry, which was equal uh, to that, and then uh, see if your B-17 can carry it. Well, that's basically what the Lancaster Mark I Special was. They ripped out the guns in the front, they ripped out the guns in the top, and they only kept the quad... Uh, the quad turret on the back of the machine and the idea uh, for this and also they stripped out a bunch of other stuff as well was to take away some weight so they could carry some of the bigger bombs including the 22,000 Grand Slam bomb which is also seen as an earthquake bomb uh, the 12,000 pound Torboy which even though is nearly uh, half the size of the Grand Slam was still a ridiculously sized bomb and then of course the bouncing bomb Bombs, which were used to destroy the dams uh, in certain factories to make sure that uh, the heavy water supply 
was not there for production. Um, all very interesting and very useful tools that the British used during World War II, and they obviously had to be carried to their targets. And, uh, well, I mean, the Lancaster was seen as the main uh, bomber that the British had. If the if the Halifax was seen, I'm sure they would have taken, you know, the guns and everything off them and tried it there. But the Lancaster was the powerful one. It was the one that would fly all of the, let's call them dangerous uh, stuff or, in, well, not dangerous, that's the wrong word. Uh, the maybe primary stuff would be a better word. So uh, they were going to fit this these ridiculous bombs to the Lancaster. Now, is something like this as useful as bringing along just a series of bombs and keeping the turrets? Well, since a lot of the fighting that uh, the 